bienvenidos a Les Chisme con Chantal Aybar. Ay, Dios mío. La comida es mi vida. Yo soy dominicana. Cana. Diablo, cuánta mierda yo hago. Bienvenidos, welcome to another episode of Les Chisme con Chanti. You heard Faras from Les Tradis Orlando, you already know, from Les Tradis to Les Chisme. And today, this episode will be in English because we have another Asian, but this one is not going to surprise you, Asian Dominican. This one is Filipino, amazing person that I met four or five years ago. And I just wanted you to hear his crazy story. And for that, like, subscribe, share it, because we got to keep cranking the cool content for you. And I now introduce you to Chef Mike Coyantes. How's it going, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Quite an intro. With, with the last name Colantes, I should I know. know I know. I should know Spanish. And I, I know. Don't. And if you didn't know history first because you know you, we gotta teach people something yeah 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 like the philippines was a spanish colony so that's why all the grandmas and a lot of people from the philippines actually have spanish names absolutely yeah you know and some of the words are the same oh yeah i've yeah. learned that in cooking and the food I, some... I lechon is lechon lechon yes it's spelled a little different like kumasta and all these things but uh a lot of spanish culture a lot of like that 500 years of Conquistador. Oh, the culture. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you got good pronunciation, Mike. Oh my gosh. So yeah, Mike is Filipino and with a Spanish last name. And I just wanna I wanna walk him through like when we first met till now, everything that <laughs> happened, and then some of the things he's done in his life, because this guy has a lot of cool stories that we need to hear. And he's got the tea, he's the cheese make king. <laughs> and is working on more concepts than I can count with my two hands. So, Mike, where do you want to start? I'll peel the onion with I you. Like, I like the chismes. That's what we say. <laughs> that's that's in Tagalog, too. In the Philippines, chismes is our gossip gossip. Oh, really? Yeah. I yeah, love yeah. it. So that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. That's so the same, the, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's trying to get me all loosey-goosey over here. So I guess I have to spill the tea today. Yes, because, guys, I'm telling you, Tagalo and Spanish have a lot in common. And the cultures, the Filipinos are like the Latinos of Asia. So this is about to get good. <laughs> it'll be good. It'll be good. I know. So hang time, Mike. 2000, was it 19 or 20? Taglish. I think 19. Uh, and then, yeah, 19 into 20, Taglish. Filipino-American. So Taglish, like Spanglish, right? Filipino, uh, Tagalog, English. Uh, we opened our little tiny uh, food stall in a Korean supermarket on the edge of town. Some might say a little bit of the getaway area, you know, like, like uh, not the best side of town supermarket. And this came from, I was a chef for like 20 years. I had no idea. Yeah. No idea. And people are surprised too. Like 20 years I've been cooking, uh, grew up here in Winter Park, uh, culinary school here right at Valencia, and then went to work for Michelin star chefs around the country. Um, And then came back to Orlando to, to start a family and just to come back home. And I end up at a at a, a Korean supermarket. Korean supermarket. Yeah, I couldn't even end up at a Publix, you know. <laughs> well, you, beggars can't be choosers. You just get what you get, you know. Uh, but we opened up this Filipino and Filipino is really hot. Even now, it's still very, very hot for the season. And uh, we opened up a Filipino uh, fast casual. And coming from fine dining for most of my career, we were like sous vide pig heads. And we went, people are really excited for the food, but it was labor intensive. It was like fine dining in 420 square feet. Um, you know, it takes a lot. I, I'd say like uh, being that stupid and naive is a good thing when you start your own business. Uh, you don't know what you're getting into because if you knew, you'd be too scared to start. True. So just get in there. Damn, cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, I don't know, but of course, Mike had worked already for a big group in town that was very known for sushi. He's worked as a chef. How many states did you 
lived before you came back to Orlando? Uh, about like, yeah, like uh, five or six. Yeah. From, you did uh, like your tour, Let Me Learn did From the, the Greats tours. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I started here with uh, Wolfgang. I was there for about four years with Wolfgang Puck. I ended up being his head sushi chef in um, in downtown Disney or what's now um, Disney Springs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but back then, I mean... Uh, I was 21 when I got the role and I was opening restaurants for them, which was a terrible idea to have a 21 be the head CD <laughs> chef of a multi-million dollar Disney property. Uh, I mean, I don't know what they're thinking, but I took the role. You know, you just jump into it. It's like, what's the worst that could happen? You're like, somebody made me in charge. <laughs> And a, and a lot of great experiences came from that. And then I worked for in Vegas with Wolfgang, or excuse me, Joel Robichon, uh, again in with Masa Takayama in Philly, Chicago, Miami, and then uh, Hawaii was the last big place. My wife and I got married, went to Hawaii, opened up our own restaurant, Mediterranean restaurant in Hawaii. Mediterranean restaurant. Yeah, I had no, I had no idea how to cook Mediterranean. And there, no chat, and there was no chat. And there was no chat GPT to figure it out either. Okay, we had to like physically look at books and be like, "What's Mediterranean?" But I was like, "Yeah, well, Craigslist have a, a chef dream opportunity in Hawaii." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I know Mediterranean." <laughs> I lied on so, the resume. So you BS your way into it. <laughs> you know, I wanted to move to Hawaii, so we did it. <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna move to Hawaii, so I'm gonna just yeah i'm just gonna decorate know, just, this resume yeah yeah just a little bit got me the job and uh quite an interesting job out there but it, it got me to hawaii and we ended up there for a couple of years and did you, did you like hawaii how was it oh, awesome. i mean i always say i looked the part because there's a lot of filipinos hawaiians there until i say y'all because i'm from florida and then it's like then they know you're not you're not a a true Hawaiian, but uh, they but, still. But but like you could look the part. You I could look. I yeah, I had the tan and everything. I was looking <laughs> great, you know. But uh, just didn't have the right lingo. Yeah. <laughs> so you blew your cover. It's like me. Yeah. Sometimes when I travel, people don't know where I am. Like yeah. fair skin, dark hair. But then as soon as I open my mouth, they're like, mm, this yeah. is not from here. Well, you get around your peoples. <laughs> <laughs> that ass is it's thick. Like, uh... Comes in, comes in right. <laughs> Yeah, or sometimes if I feel like they don't think I belong, like yeah. if I'm in an I like Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, throw a little thicker. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. I throw that like ghetto like Spanish version. They're like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. She means business. And I'm like, yeah, I'm from here. Yeah, <laughs> that's too funny. That's funny. Oh my gosh. So first corporate, then you're like, see you corporate Hawaii. Then right. you're like, okay, I guess let me settle back to Orlando because I love Orlando. Yeah, I like came that back you. to Orlando and uh, just, you know, families here. We want to raise kids. It's a great place, emerging city, but no Michelin stars, no nothing here. I actually burnt, got burnt out from heart. I was like, I'm not going to cook. I want to chill out. So I went into. And he like switched careers. Like, yeah. tell us about that. Like, you were I like... joined the family business, did a little bit of real estate for a little couple years. And then I also did uh, media production with some friends and did, I think this is our old office space That's so downtown. funny, guys. Like, we're producing a space that he used to yeah. when he like gave up cooking. Yeah. This like... is like the old office space, which is so weird. Like I had a little. Like deja vu right moment. There. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, so it's kind of surreal to be here filming with you, which is aw awesome. Just so awesome to see it. And it's beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to try my hands at different things, right? You, you, you know, just do something else. All I knew was cooking was since cooking. I was 16. It was Oof. just, that's all I did. Yeah. And, did your uh, family cook too? Or you were? The... No, I was like the only one. You're the only one. It happens when it. you're a bad student, you know, <laughs> when you're Filipino. <laughs> You're either going to be like a nurse, mailman, or yeah, <laughs> what else? Or accountant. That, that I is married the, the accountant. So, that is such yeah. a stereotype, but I see that so often. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> or work on the cruise ships. I never worked in cruise ships. But, uh, <laughs> You're like, no. No. You could have cooked in I, a cruise ship. I could have. I could have. But I'd be the only one that didn't understand anyone else. Like, I don't speak any Tagalog. So I opened the Filipino our first Wait, restaurant. You don't, you don't speak Tagalog? So, yeah, my wife is like, please never ever try to speak Tagalog because it sounds terrible. Like your <laughs> American accent, you don't sound, you know. <laughs> She's like, you're not legit. She, I'm not, no, no, I'm definitely not legit. I, sure. We do the same to like some Latinos. We're like, that's that's bad and that's me. But like, <laughs> you're like, um. Well, I always said it was a connecting, like opening Taglish was amazing for us. It was my connecting point to a culture that I've been half in, half out. My wife is from the Philippines, 
grew up there, came here when she was young, but she has all that that cultural reference, and it was it was great to, you know, connect with fellow you know countrymen, but also introduce it to people that now it's like, oh man, when we announce that we're reopening Taglish, they're like, I love this and love that and Lumpia and all these things, and so heartwarming that it's um you know to bring it back and show people honestly, this. literally count me in that group. I had no idea what the heck Filipino food was yeah. until I went to Taglish. And then, you know, as a content creator and people asking me what is that, I'm like, guys, it's like the same rice and pork thing that we eat, yeah. but with a different flair. Yeah. It's like rice, a lot of rice, a lot of pork, a lot a of lot fried of stuff, yeah. but with like a little different seasoning. And I started like telling a lot of Latinos, like, pull up. It's literally a <laughs> lot of the same things we eat, just like yeah. seasoned and prepared different way. And then I, I started like looking into There's it. There's so like, much Bing. correlation. Like our Yeah, I had no uh, idea. Our ceviche, like at, at Barcada, our new sake bar that's Barcada is like bar like cada, which is a sake bar, but also Filipino and has a couple triple meanings, you know. Um but we have like uh, arriscado, like little fritters, which is like uh, rice with uh, chicken and uh, ginger sky. And so similar to to Spanish, some Italian rice and chicken. Yeah. Rice and, chicken. and then we have our ceviche is called quinilao, which is just our normal ceviche marinated in vinegar. So there's just such correlation. You know, it's really interesting. Yeah, I know. Because in Latino culture, we like a lot of things escabeche, yes. which is with the vinegar. Mm -hmm. And... You guys do a lot of things with vinegar. Every yeah, we like uh, sweet and sour a lot. So escabeche, same thing in Tagalog. That word, it's just a sweetness, sweet and sour sauce, basically for us as well. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. Yeah. So, long story short, after Mike was like, I connected with my Filipino culture. I like this. Then he's like, Let me maybe go again into like more bougie things, <laughs> and then he started opening other things. Yeah. And like, walk me through that because he mentioned Barcada, but let me tell you, he skipped like four years of history <laughs> and he needs to tell us because I think I lost count with all the concepts. Yeah. And just, just if you didn't know, Mike, and you're going to visit Orlando or you're in Orlando, you can see him at Soseki. You can see him at the downstairs of Eva Barcada that he mentioned. Sushi Sane. He's going to reopen Taglish. Uh, got a few restaurants. Perlas, maybe, which was a pizza. It That's was a pizza up. concept. It's coming back. I mean, we got to hold him accountable. So he's got to <laughs> like mention all of them and everything he's learned from that. The good, the bad, the ugly, the things that people don't share in social media. There's so much. Pick, up. pick, pick one of the poisons I shared and start and start with one. There's so much ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, if you're um, if you're squeamish or just starting something on your own, like squeamish to to do it, it's just you just gotta jump in. You're not gonna have all the answers. You jump in head first and you just get it done. I always say like the what's the quality that helps uh, continue forward or um, it's grit. It's having that ability to just stay with it. We call it cojones. Cojones, yeah. <laughs> well, it's ha you know, so many people halfway through the journey and then they don't get the blessing. It's like, it's too hard. And it's kind of like I say, if God showed you exactly the, the way that you were going to, because you think it's a straight line to your yep. destination, but that journey is so important for who you're going to be at the end of it. And, uh, really shapes you to handle more. Like I could never expect to have, um, be partnered and thankful for all the people that's um, supported us, but to have all these restaurant um, concepts going, I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't like have to fight for that first one, that second one, the third one, you know, even though in the midst of it, you're like, get me the hell out of it. <laughs> you're like, I can't do this. Oh man, how many times I told that to my wife is like, I'm done, throw it away, I'm burn get the gasoline, I'm burning the restaurant down. We're gonna start over. You know, I've got I've got the bags packed, I got I got the bug out bag, let's go. We'll move to Alaska. You like <laughs> This is a, I don't even know if it's an every week thing. I think it's an everyday thing. I'm ready to just oh my gosh. grab that gasoline. Yeah, because but... cause you had two taglish and then you're like, scratch that shit. Right. I'm going to go for a place and I want it to be Michelin. How yeah. was that transition? Well, I mean, Michelin wasn't even here back in 2020, but I knew I always it wanted wasn't, to. It wasn't, but like yeah. people like me, I literally, I can go back to my video and I was yeah. like, these people are going for a Michelin star. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we never had the intention of going for Mission Star. It wasn't even announced in Orlando, but uh, I was driving through Winter Park traffic as no, as you do. You just get stuck, and I saw this super small place. And again, I didn't know anything better. I didn't know how much it cost me time, you know, effort, money, all that. I just said, "Wow, there's this place," and um, I said, "Man, that's a sushi bar. Let's do a sushi concept." So. I just opened a sushi bar called Soseki. Soseki in the Japanese means cornerstone or foundation. And that was really, yes, Taglish was the first restaurant, but this was the one that we've really built our foundation of our operations from. 10 seats, five days a week, uh, no menu. So omakase means chef's choice. Uh, I work for some of the really just uh, Masa Takayama, who's one of the most amazing sushi chefs in the country, has three Michelin stars, the only three star uh, Japanese chef in the country. And I ran his restaurant in, in Aria and I said, well, let's let's try this out. So uh, I took one of my chefs, Chef Kevin, who's now the chef de cuisine of, of uh, Soseki. I took him with me from he's never cooked in his career until he worked with me at a food hall wow. in at Taglish. That's like his first job. Uh, no formal experience besides that. Um, and then now he's running a Michelin star. So restaurant. you're like, let's go, let's cook street food Filipino. And then you're like, Kevin, actually, let's do this like high end. Yeah, there was something in him that, you know, his days off, he's in his noses in the books, and he's going to try food all over. You know, he's had a, an opportunity to eat all over the world with his family. And so he's just you know, this was his second or third career. He was uh, supposed to be a doctor like his father and uh, ended up cooking. Uh, but really, it, it's the amount of effort that you put in and, and where True. he ended up. And, and he, he absolutely kills it. Yeah, That's awesome. I, I remember, guys, if you didn't know, I went to Seki twice before I got the Michelin star because I loved it. I made a video and then I was like, I told a couple people, go before I earn a Michelin. Yeah. Because between you and I, I was like, this shit's going to get more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying and, to get people in the door. And, and I'm like, sure enough. They think I didn't notice. <laughs> people think like it's... No. Yeah. And I didn't notice. It went up the price as soon as they got that star. But you know, I knew it. You yeah. deserve it. Put in the work. Well, you always want you want to like level up too. And it costs yeah. a little more money to level up. But that, that's the thing. I it's, know. But you know, it was like... $50, but I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> like radar. I was like, spider senses. I was like, I'm watching you. <laughs> no, but I absolutely loved it. Right. And I can show you where I said, I think this is going to get Mission Star. Like, you guys have to go now. Well, they we, we were open for about six months. And then Michelin said in November, hey, we are, it's happening. You know, we're happening to Florida, Tampa, Orlando, Miami. And we were like, all right. So they announce you like they're like we're coming. They announce that they're gonna raid it, but we don't know when. We don't know who. The oh. inspectors are completely random, and it's ten seats. I talked to every single guest that first year, second year, and wow. still had no idea. Did like, you know they, which ones were? No, you you're like they're no? so trained to be so incognito, you know. And wow. um, I didn't know how that's how it worked. But it's great because you treat people them exactly like how your other guests are. So there's nothing different from it. But that first year before, you know, I remember even up to Michelin happened on June 19th, I think in Orlando, that first year was the award ceremony. It was on a Thursday. I remember that week, the, the Sunday, like not even like 10 seats, right? I only filled two seats that night, two people to show up. That's 20% of business, yeah. right? With like, when you have a staff that's like one to one, one person to one uh, guest, and you don't fill that seat, it kills you. I remember I was on a date night with my wife and it was brutal. I just, we got out of movies and it just all hit me and I started crying. I was like, I don't know how we're going to survive summer. This is so brutal. I opened up the dream restaurant and no one showed up. And uh, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. You put all your efforts in one basket and you believe so much in your vision, in your vision. that no one's going to talk you out of it. But if we didn't, if something didn't change, we'd have to change the direction of Soseki. We'd have to change everything. Went to um, the Did Michelin you end up event. crying a lot? Oh, I mean, nonstop. Because right. you're just, like, before it, you're just like, what am I going to do? And after it, you're like, you're just so thankful. You know, you just literally uh, were at the award ceremony. 
And they only invited me and my wife. We snuck in the rest of the team. We closed the restaurant, said, you know what? No one's even here tonight. Cancel the one reservation we had. Like, Cancel on. it. Let's go. Like the whole team, stay at the hotel and we'll we'll meet up afterwards. But I we ended up sneaking them into the uh, into the world. So, I'm sorry, sorry, Mish. You know, you got up your game on security, but uh, if you want to just come with us, just say you're part of the crew. So second crew, we won't be mad at you. And so we snuck into we snuck into it, and um, I'm getting wasted. <laughs> I, I just say I, I saw was, some videos and photos. I was tr- I was just so nervous, and I just got wasted. And they call our names, and it was the most amazing thing. Our phones start blowing up. Reservations filled for six to eight months. What it did for the team, for all catapulted our careers. Like it changed our life forever. Um, but what it again that journey to there, right? That was a twenty minute thing on stage or whatever it was that had long lasting effects but everything all of that journey to get there i mean we opened so second with garage floors garage we floors we could like we painted the floor the cement because oh, we really? couldn't afford tile wow like that's what it takes like just pr- like again you believe with all of your heart that, that this that's... is exactly what i'm supposed to do you're like, let's go for it. And I'm it. too stupid to think that garage floors are... <laughs> Listen, the right I pay a lot of attention. I didn't notice. You did a good job painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was pretty much just me painting it. It was like, yeah, you just... Because it was kind of dark yeah. and dim. Yeah, know? yeah. Oh, we... It was like an ice rink. Like, if that thing got wet, we'd... Like, so many times... Like, Ben or some got slipped and hit. You know, it was just crazy. When I think back on, like, how, um, you know how pieced together it was pol- not not polished and then you get your stuff together and yeah when when your book six eight months you know in advance it, it just meant everything and you were like the second i guess at that point the only option was either kabuki that sometimes they did it and then right. cadence that had been the only popular option but oh yeah they were Amazing. basically the only ones yeah and I mean, then that you... first year was four four restaurants two hotels which it's great you know you have good amount good amount of budget to do whatever you want and then two little mom and pop restaurants um the amazing people like cadence uh, mark and uh mark low and jen that group we were the f- that year was the first year for i think three restaurant filipino um filipino chefs we we're the first group of filipino chefs to get michelin in the, in the entire world and now it's like the Asian mafia in Orlando. <laughs> Everything's Asian and you guys control and own the no. whole dining scene. Uh, we're not allowed to open any more Asian restaurants. It's <laughs> too much. It's too much. If you have an Asian concept and you want to come to Orlando, go to Tampa. Okay? They need you. Okay? There's too much here. For real. There's a lot. There's a lot. That was like the start of it and everybody's like, I guess Michelin is <laughs> Asian. Let's all like jump in the bang wagon. No, I, but it was incredible. It was like... Um, so many new things were happening this year or through these past three years with Michelin. Uh, the, the next year we got some of the year by Michelin with Benjamin Coots, who's oh, our he's beverage such director. Badass. But he, you know, we, they picked a, a New York restaurant that opened in Miami with, you know, amazing, amazing op, uh, coat. And then next year, our little 10 seat restaurant. And then the year after this that's, year. That's the Korean one, right? That's a Korean oh, one. I, I like that. I've, I've had it in awesome. New York. I've had it in New York. Um, then this year, Kaya, brand new restaurant, right out the gates, gets a green star, our first green star for Orlando. And we I get to Google the, that because I didn't know what that was. Yeah, then I think we got the best beverage program or cocktail program uh, with um, who are the boys over there with the Cuban place. Um, what's it called? The Cuban know. place in Milk District. Uh, oh, Justin. Otto's High Dive. Otto's High Dive. Oh, I love that. And it's just like Orlando is on the up. Yeah, you're like, Orlando's shit. on the up, you know? So it's been awesome. That's great. It's not everything, right? It's not everything. It's it's not, but but for us, and if we've been in the industry for a long time, it, it means a lot. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's badass. And how are you now balancing, like, from being, I am a Filipino grinding it to, I am the face of all these things, and now my phone's blowing up. <laughs> how are you managing that? Let's be real. Poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Two kids later. Uh, multiple restaurants, um, you know, triple the staff, uh, you know, as best as I can. And this morning I'm just sweating my, my face off, like 
bringing in tables and chairs for a new restaurant. Like I still, the grind's still there. It's not, hasn't changed. Right. But I think that's important. Um, no one's going to see the hard work and effort going in there, but you got to, it has to be there. It's like anything worth working hard for. Yeah, no, I threatened him. I said, I knew you before all those stars, so you better not disappear or think you're hot shit now. I literally <laughs> threatened him a couple of times. Because <laughs> now I feel like, let's be honest, so many people now want your name on something or want you to be behind it because sure. you have the mission experience, you have the attention, you have all that. Like, how are you navigating that to make sure you don't dilute your brand right. and you make the right moves for your future? I mean, you always have to think to you know, building a brand, understanding like those next move moves uh, affect not just you, but the people around you, the people that entrusted their livelihood with. And it's, it's, it's a tall task. I don't take it lightly. Like the, the fact that like, we have so many people are like, I want to follow what you do chef, or I want to uh, join your group because we want to get somewhere with you. It's like, I, I take it. It's a heavy toll, you know, um, you know, to direct things like, you know taking a brand deal that doesn't make sense for the operations or like it could damage yeah. damage you guys so it's um i think i'm still working through it you know you don't know until you know and make some you know make some headaches and mistakes and things like that but um new opportunities come to do consulting we we're consulting for ava and mila during their members clubs that was an amazing opportunity to get invited to uh now i've got next month in october i'm opening um my first like international project, a little consulting, but uh, an ongoing kind of put my name on a very in, cool uh, brand. Dubai. In Dubai. Because he's fancy like that. Because if you're a celebrity chef, you got to slap something in Dubai. And Mike's like, I'm coming too. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yes, please. Yeah, he's like, yes. <laughs> Except I, I was there. I was there in the summer and I thought, I was like, no, guys, I'm from Florida. I can handle this. I lived in the desert. I can handle, I can handle heat, right? It's like 80 to 90% humidity, 105 degrees. I thought Vegas was bad with the, you know, it's just like a hot air dryer to you. This just sucks your soul right out of your, <laughs> you were like, Bye, your Dubai. body. <laughs> I arrived at 1, at 1 p.m. in the morning. It was 105 degrees outside and it just oh my gosh. horrendous. Uh, yeah, you put your, your feet in the water and it's like 80 degrees. It's insane. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... That's the but dead like season Dubai. and it's here Dubai. It Dubai, yeah. here we go. So, I mean, also taking opportunity. Like, I always say, if you are ready for the opportunity, uh, like a promotion or something like that, if you are absolutely 100% ready and you can handle it, you'd be ready for that next the level beyond that. Like, you have to have a little bit of healthy fear, a little bit of healthy not understanding of unpreparedness for that role. Because so, you got to grow into it, right? So, I don't know what I'm doing in Dubai, but I'm there. But yeah, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> I love that for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And what's been like, you say, one of the dumbest mistakes you've done business-wise? Because we got into this whole conversation, which also came out in the podcast with Thomas Ward of cooking is 20, 30% of it. But operations oh. running a restaurant is a whole other, a whole other beast. You got to be able to do both or it's not going to happen. Some people can't do both. I, and you know, that's, I still struggle with it. I, you know, some, there are moments where I can, I can bang out, you know, I'll be in Dubai and I've got to develop 30 new menu items and it comes like this. And then there's sometimes I've got to, you know, change the hat and be a marketing and PL and understand business costs. And yes, you, I'll be honest, I think I do things decent, but to do everything well, you know, that's why you have, you have an executive chef who takes care of books. You have a chef de cuisine who's like really focused on food. You compartmental your life, you compartmental uh, the things in your restaurant or the different roles so that people can be successful and they can thrive. But in the beginning, when you're opening your own restaurant, guess what? You are wearing, wearing all the hats and you've got to be able to do everything decent. Because you could cook the best food of your life and then not be able to turn a profit and you close the doors the next day. And sure. it happens all the time. Yes. And I've been in those positions. I mean, when you ask what are some of like the, you know, the stupid mistakes I've done. I mean, everything's a stupid mistake. Everything. 
You don't know. You just throw, a couple examples. You, you throw some stuff on the wall. Yeah. Uh, Soseki, sometimes, you know, switching, uh, switching menu ideas and changing things, uh, you know, on the fly and realizing, hey, this just caught, we didn't make any money this week. And it, you know, and it's detrimental to the team. Because you just got carried away and bought very expensive. Right. You, you could go one way and just get super creative and super geeky about, uh, you know, about the culinary side and forget about the operation side. And it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you learn is from failure. True. Yeah. And I know you've opened it and closed a couple of concepts in the way. Oh, you're uh, trying to get dirty with me. <laughs> so, so, I, 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 I told you, nobody's safe. It happens. I want to highlight you, but I want to get real. So yeah. are you the drama or are you good to work with? How do you find good people to like partner with? Because I Who feel knows? like this guy has partnered with everybody and their mother in this community, <laughs> which is, it's great, but it also yeah. brings a lot of emotions, a lot of partnerships, different interests. Like no, I haven't partnered with too many people. I think on you know on, on collabs, on a, you know, a co on collabs and stuff like that. Or, um, but some partnership. I mean, you don't know. It's a marriage, and and sometimes everyone's just so excited about a project, and you know, and it's scary too because you've got to really know who you're getting in bed with. To be very honest, because mm -hmm. um, you're going to be married with them through thick and thin, all the dirty, dirty stuff and all the good stuff. You've got to be able to, you know. Um, well, number one thing I think now that we say at our restaurants is ego. Uh, ego is a dream killer. Um, when people ego's can't get out of their own way, um, that's when you stop growing. When you people can't get out of their own ways, that's when you can't get the best results because it's just my way or the highway. And, uh, you know, maybe I do this a little too much, but I consult my team on a lot and they have a, a seat at the table. Ultimately, you have to make the right decision and they have to respect that decision. But um, I want to hear as much feedback, you know, where they're at, where, what we can handle. And some stuff just has to be forced. If we have to add additional day of service or close a day of service because it makes sense operationally, um, it's getting too hard, Chef. We have to close the next day. Uh, I want to make that money. I want to be the business owner hat and say, hey, I'd love for us to make extra revenue, but it doesn't make sense for the business. It doesn't make sense for our team. They're burning out. You also have to make that call, you know? And so, and, and not everyone sees those, those decisions you got to make throughout, uh, you know, and some partners may agree or disagree, but that's where, you know, you have to have that trust of, all right, you're running the books and you know what you're doing with the books. Um, and so, you know, so sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah. I've closed some operations, just wasn't the best locations. Like we had UCF Taglish. I, in the beginning, some of the biggest mistakes, just being too ambitious. There's a honeymoon stage for restaurants, right? The first six months, it's amazing. Everybody's talking about you. The buzz is real. It's going strong. Let's do the second one right away. Then it's like, <laughs> then you get into real business and the day to day and, uh, I like the honeymoon stuff. That's why. <laughs> that's why I open up brand new. That's why I love opening restaurants. And then after a year, you're like, "What's next? What's next?" What's so next? it is like marriage. You're like in the honeymoon stage constantly. Yeah. So but does then, that give you like the dopamine to like? Give yeah, you the dopamine to like. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can. I can work eighty hours. Yeah, it's fine. But then you know when you've got to maintain that. I mean, and there are. I, you know, amazing chefs who that's, they love that. They don't want this roller coaster wild ride. Me, I love it. You know, <laughs> um, they want something consistent and they, you know, and so I, and I find some great people that can, can maintain and that's what they're good at, you know? So just putting like aces in places, but in the beginning, yeah, just being too ambitious. I opened like two taglishes and we didn't really see the value, you know, it, this was during COVID and people weren't going back to school and things are, yeah, you know, and so um, those are costly mistakes. Um, it's not all success story, right? It's like, it's, you know, as quickly as you make money, you lose money. So don't let money be the deciding factor of what you do in your life. Just make sure what you're doing uh, has meaning and purpose. And, and that stuff comes and goes. It's a tool to kind of, kind of run through your hand like water. So yeah, there's no point in being obsessed about it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you've taken some pretty, Big risk. Like I was surprised with Sushi Saint too. Sushi Saint was uh, interesting to open up in a warehouse. In a warehouse in like downtown. the wrong side of downtown. I keep saying I'm not going to do this. A fancy place. 
with like the pricing on the wrong side of downtown. I'm like, what is Mike thinking? So last November, we uh, have you regretted that yet, or like are you still going? What's happening? Walk me through that. It hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> Last November, we opened Sushi Saint, Orlando's first hand roll tamaki bar. Delicious, um, though. Thank you. Yeah, at least it's delicious. Yes. I didn't mean for it to be fancy. I said, I'm going to open up my casual spot, and then that's our casual spot is a little bit Is that fancy. your definition of casual? That's like, casual. You, you and I have very different definitions of casual. <laughs> then I started getting a little bit fancy and fancy, and I couldn't help myself. I got to stop. Um, so Sushi Saint opened up in November. I think I had partners that of Brew Theory who had a brewery. They said, hey, I had this like marketplace food hall weird thing with a couple with grilled cheeses, amazing you know concepts. But we, maybe you do a stall. On, I was like, I'm not doing no stall, man. If you want me here, I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to blow it out. All but, or nothing, okay? All or not, <laughs> the bougie the audacity. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, I'll, I'll do, you know, if, if you let me take over the whole place and curate the whole thing, I want to curate something special. And he, you know, you know, good rent price and partnership. And we, we had some, some free time. We didn't have anything going on. I said, let's do it. Let's create a new concept. And, uh, I'm bored. Let's si create a new concept. Basically. Yeah. Why not? 60 days from like signing contracts to construction, to opening, to branding, we just launched. And had no idea what we were doing, uh, like most things. And then we, yeah, we launched. Um, and it was a slow start, wrong side of town, terrible parking, blah, blah, blah. The parking is a challenge. It's challenging. There's parking. There's parking. There's parking. It's just you have to pay for parking because exactly. it's a city. And, and if, <laughs> if you have to, like, it's, it's, it's downtown, right? They will let, you'll have a reservation that, like, if you can't find parking, they'll just say, ah, I'm not, we'll go somewhere else. Like, we're Floridians. We don't want to walk. I get it. Yeah. And honestly, if it was like Chicago, New York, pay for parking, Miami, people would be like, oh, but oh, Orlando, dude. people are not used to In pay Japan, for parking. In Japan, like you could have a nice restaurant on like the fifth floor and be packed. Like if it's just, you know, visibility, there's so much goes to it. Like, again, being a little young and dumb and, and naive and ambitious, that little cocktail mix uh, kind of, yeah, let's just open something. People show up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, people show up. It's good food. I mean, I know what I'm doing, kind of. Whatever. Had no idea what I was getting into. We opened it. We opened it up November. We were pushing through the season, trying to just get traction. And then Michelin gets gives recommendations, randomly just recommendations of places to eat. We get on the, the Michelin app by January. And then... So you were only open two months and then Michelin found you and put you yeah. in the app? I, well, I think there's a little bit of, you know, oh, chef, Michelin chef, and then the second location. So there are probably some expectations, right? I mean, you, you'd you expect, you know, someone, uh, you know. So they're watching you, basically. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> creeping up on me. Um, and then in April, when the actual awards came out, showed that we had a Bib Gourmand and we got, you know, less than six months. We got Bib Gourmand, which is kind of like a cheaper one star. Up, you know that that affordable one star and April hit. We're doing great. Things are rocking. Summer hits and like everybody, it's not just me. Everybody kind of just slows down. Summer, summer is tough here. It is rough. I think it's everywhere, but Orlando's pretty rough. Yeah, every 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 business owner I usually talk to, summer they're just figuring it out, trying to see surviving. Yeah, and getting ready because it's every summer. It's every summer. Yeah, yeah. So and that's wild. No, but that's, I mean, I like that you're being very open and honest because I feel like a lot of times people just see oh, the Instagram posts, the things. Oh, my God, he's living mm -hmm. the life. Everything's perfect. This guy must be, you know? Oh, no. It's... And um, so I I appreciate you saying it like it is, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and I know one of the things that that you've shared also is with all that success and all that momentum, people online trying to reach out to you and how do you handle that portion and dealing and managing influencers and all that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I want you to tell me a little <laughs> bit about that. How do we handle influencers? <laughs> this one. <laughs> they get too rowdy. Listen. Um, kick them out the door. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have a blacklist. If you got an influencer's blacklist? I will, I'll share it with any chefs out there that want the blacklist. Like, we have the, we have oh the, we have the notes. We have, we oh have the tea. God. I love it. Message me separately for it. 
<laughs> you should see your nut. <laughs> oh! <laughs> listen, no, but, um, listen. How do this you is the tea I'm here for because there's always two sides of the story. No, yeah. And yeah, I know yeah. some influences get a bad rap, and in general for a reason. Listen. And I know it's it's good and bad. There's extremes on the all ends, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy yelling, screaming chefs, you know, hard to deal with clients. Is that the majority of it? No, most of it's mostly pleasant. But how do we deal with, uh, yeah, just like like inquiries of like working together or, you know, I'm still getting used better at this as saying no, you know, valuing time over money or valuing, you know, valuing time better. Like I have a hard time saying no. I like to just try and do everything. Yeah. But there are times and that's just, I'm so stressed out. And uh, and it takes a toll on your team. Again, I'm not representing just myself and it's like whatever chef my client just wants to do, he'll do. I have to really think about everyone that's entrusted me with their livelihood. So, um, you know, saying no to projects or, you know, we get pulled in a lot of directions to try to do a lot of things and we just have to be choosy with it. If, if it aligns with our vision and what we're trying to do for the season, I think that's important. Um, when it comes to influencers, I think there's great value in, in building those relationships. Yeah, there are some who like, uh, yeah, I need this and that, and this is coming for free. This is what I can do, That all I'm going to do. And we try different ways to counteract that. Like, hey, this is what we need from you. If you could just get, you know, but, it, you know, and some work, some don't. I think it's it's just building a personal relationship with whatever influencer and say, hey, um, not that we expect something for you, but what does this Relation. When you say collab, what does that truly mean that to you? True. Does it just mean a free meal and a, and a quick like story post? Which there are some big influencers that just do that, or is, and there's some like you who like just rave about us and put you know you'll you'll put us you'll put us on the spotlight not because you have to but because you want to because you're so excited for the brand. Um, there are great influencers who are like I love when they say no to us. It's like no, you know, or uh, people, you know critics who will just no no i pay for my own meals and stuff like that and uh we respect that a lot he's not paid to talk good about me just fyi <laughs> <laughs> put the camera down you'll see the knife pointed at me guys <laughs> i'm not here by my own will <laughs> no no but I, i love that and i know we've talked about it because you've had it from both sides from hiring pr people yeah. and people to represent you out there that then you don't agree with the vision and from having influencers you've had it for both sides and you're kind of in the middle because like you said you can be running all those things and also producing your same content yeah i've done both but all, you know um network is everything you know i i listened to a podcast and he said you know my the first billionaire i met i asked him like what was that turning point for you to go to a millionaire to a billionaire and he said nothing that you could get in your that you could earn or work hard for in your life. And it really, and he said, it's network. Who you're associated with, who represents you, who's in your circles, who who you allow in your circles, this network of people that could get, level you up. This, not that every person you're looking to, how can I use them to get to the next level? But who are these people that open up new doors for you? And the longer, you know, in life that you live and the relationships that you build and, you know, quality relationships uh help build that be that wonderful network that opens new doors um for new investors for me to um you know strategic planners and you know to live a different life you know but uh but that was really it is like this network of people that now you get to say are your close friends that's awesome i've never seen him this serious guys sorry Like I like I, business. I like talking about business. <laughs> I love it too. I'm, yeah. you know, I work on the business side for my right. corporate, so I, I do understand that part. Yeah, yeah. and that's why I'm always very mindful. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, I appreciate. I went to Suzuki when you earned the mission start, and it was very transparent. It was invited. Yeah, and I was really happy, but I had already filled half of the restaurant twice before. Yeah, yeah. So to me, I was like, oh, thank you so much. And I'm excited for you. And I haven't been in a little bit, but I already knew I liked it. Mm -hmm. I had already done like maybe three videos. I've already sent a bunch of people and I've probably spent over two grand in sittings. Yeah. So to and me, that's what's like, you know, to me, that's like, okay. Why we invited you in the first place because we built this relationship where we're like, we Correct. just love the support 
already support that we have, how do we bless them with, you know, hey, building, again, building more relationships. Right, and I appreciate that because a lot of people just see, oh, it's posted online. She must be living a great life, all, all this. And people don't know a lot of what happens behind the scenes. You work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this influencer life, you think it's just like eating. It's like, imagine not being able to enjoy your food because you have to like, I couldn't do that. Cause I just want to like eat. I barely take photos when I go to like front fine dining mission. So I barely take photos. It's just like, I just want to be in the moment you're and like, enjoy it. And I want to eat my food hot, which you never do. Cause you're always cold. Never. <laughs> it's most of the time I've gotten quicker just yeah. to be like, okay, I got like a few seconds. Got better so at, be yeah, yeah. I got better at it, but you know, um, and then there are some influencers who expect things or like, you know, and that's, it's, you never know, you know, but the hard part is, yeah, my team suffers too, because it's like, well, you know, trying to get, you know, as a business owner, you know, when you only have 10 seats or 20 seats, they rely on the tips, they rely on these things, you know, it's extra work for them. But ultimately, it's part of the business that you have to kind of build that network and continue to to grow the reach. The tipping is another very interesting subject right right how do you make do you get the influencer tip do you get the i yeah. i literally it's such a hot topic and if you're listening to this comment whatever you think is right i mostly most of the time i tip even if right. the food is complimentary because i understand that yeah like the staff they're put in a position where they have to serve me but if it was a different person they would get the tip yeah and we put then, that on it we put that on the roll where it's like okay if you don't you know we put it like we just ask that you tip and the amount of people that say no to us, it's a lot. I know. Cause some of them are like, well, but then I'm actually spending money. It's very controversial. I'm, I'm actually but, spending money, but no, I but think it's, you're, you're getting a service. I'm still. telling you, it's, it's so tough. controversial. Some, some people are like, you have to tip. Some yeah, people what are do, like, what I'm do, not what tipping. What does everyone out there think? I know. Let me know. You know, um, I don't know. You work for them loosely, but there's, <laughs> there's a restaurant in town that will I have it as mandatory. You are responsible for it as a uh, and they'll as an influencer. Yes, they'll bring you the bill for the tip. Yeah, yeah. We we tried and we talked and we and, you know we go back and forth because because you have to take it like you said it's a business decision, but you have to take a stance either right. way. And you're not here to please people. You have to just do whatever you know. think is best. I don't know what the best is. You Me know? neither. I can't. I want to take. I'm... I want to take care of my team. So if they don't tip, you know, we we try to we take care of that tip portion or we try to figure something out but i think um you know it depends too are you paying for the are you paying the influencer to be there and it's That's like hey, or it's like okay i'm paying you to be there but also then uh we're going to take the the grant whatever you end up you know partaking it, it gets, in it gets hard. it gets it gets tough i've yeah. i've tried to come to a conclusion myself and i don't land on anything so I don't judge people that do one or the other. I'm just like, okay, do damned what if you do, damned if you yeah, don't. Exactly. You know I mean? You're I'm not, like, not going to please everybody. No, it just is. I'm like, do whatever you want. What do you think is best? And so sometimes we miss out on on good opportunities with some, you know, great influencers, great reach. But at the end of the day, stick to your guns. What whatever you decide to do, stick to your guns. And if it, you know, on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. On both sides, whatever makes sense for you. You don't. They don't need your business, and you don't need their business, and it's fine. And just leave it at that. You know. Yeah. I just try to keep it cordial. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else that people don't see about my Coyantes outside that you would like people to know? <laughs> no, I don't want anyone Taking to Taking the any chef hat off. What else? <laughs> what else? No, I just work a lot. I think um, next season, so in October. Coming in hot. The, yeah, coming in hot. The City Food Hall is taking over the, uh, I, the <gasps> Hall in the Yard. Nice. So they're a group out of West Palm Beach. I think they did Mia Marketing um, in the Design District in Miami. And then they have a couple different food halls. But they are uh, taking the space over. Um, by next month, we'll be opening uh, Chez Les Copains, which kind of means like eating at a friend's house. Really a super Frenchy thing. Just call it CLC. Is it bougie too? All I do is bougie. <laughs> no. I hope not. I hope. I mean, again, my idea of casual. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's gonna be the my biggest idea thing. Casual, just His show idea up in the casual. bow tie and the uh, you know and the gown, and, and that's casual. And it's for casual, me. yeah. It's, it's summer casual. Uh, <laughs> French brasserie opened up on the second floor in Ivanhoe, like one of the hottest neighborhoods in town. You know, literally down the street from Mills Fifty. So I'm super excited for that. That's awesome. 
Then Taglish is returning downstairs um, with Chef DJ, who uh, we've known each other for many years. He's the chef of Danilo's Pasta Bar, if you don't know. All the dopamine, I told you. Keep going, what else? (laughs) That has a uh, calendar seating, so we will do Filipino calendar seating too. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I can't get away from tasting menus. I know. Stop, He's, Philippi- um, stop Asian food. Um, if you're listening to this, yeah. Mike doesn't like you to the side on a menu. He wants full control oh, full and control. he'll feed you and you just pay and eat. Pay and eat. It's fun. Yes. You did You did the Kamayan. Remember we did yeah, the Kamayan, yeah. which is I, fun. I, I, honestly, yeah. I love that. Filipino eat with your hands thing. We did that at Taglish. It was a lot of fun. That was, that was pretty cool. Uh, Dubai's opening in October, which is called Kaimana. Kaimana is like this ocean spirit. So it's going to be a beach club in... Um, in Jamera Ca- Beach. Casual too, right? So casual. I Yeah. <laughs> it's a beach club, right? You don't have a tuxedo swimsuit? Oh, whoa. A- I'm getting myself one. <laughs> it's, it's a must have for, for summers of 2025. Yeah. I do okay. a fashion blog as well. Oh, nice. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, I am, I'm one of like your top contributors on Facebook. I watch everything you do because I do like your content. Well, thank you. I give you a hard time. Yeah, but I do love I, I your only concepts. expect that. I only expect <laughs> only you know, like to get the real real. I get it from you. Like you send me like the rudest text. I'm like, yeah, okay, I got to look into that because it's real. But it's that's real. That's a, that's it's a real. True, true ones, like yeah. to be honest, like I had one of experience that I didn't like, and I didn't say anything. I let it pass. Then he, they sent me one, to, and I said, hey, I had a bad. Just to let you know. Yeah. Just to let you know, and I and he literally jumped in because. I, if I just tell you everything's okay, you expect everything's okay, and then you don't get then to you don't, grow you don't, or learn well, from and it, and you don't know. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I'm not in everywhere. Some people are like, "How are you running all these?" I was like, "Dude, the same guy that cooks <laughs> when I'm there and I'm shaking your hand is the same guy cooking when I'm not there." I just want to say that straight up. Like, don't I? I, I get it. Like, yeah. there's a reason why my chef coat's so clean at the end of the night. Okay, because no, <laughs> I still cook. I still cook, but when they when they let me. Yeah, no, usually it's like the old chef in the restaurant just like in their way most times, but sometimes they let me So cook. now mostly you are like developing menus. Um, you but know, what would you say it's taking most of your time? Uh, what's taking most of my time is really developing teams. Um, you know, I'm still kind of the conductor for all the restaurants of uh, we have to do events and this is where we want to and doing pop-ups and different things and market strategies and boring P&Ls and stuff like that. <laughs> the P&Ls. And moving furniture in the, the middle of summer, you know, that's getting Amazon orders delivered to the house. Um, and then just expansions. We've got a, a few expansion projects, um, you know, going New York. We just opened New York earlier this summer for uh, Sushi Saint. We're going to turn that into a, to a, a, pro, a you know, to an omakase in Long Island City. So um, most of my time is like jumping back and forth and trying to create this. Create ideas and this making rest- the concepts create, happen. Create a restaurant group. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Um, and just being, trying to strategize for, yeah, to continue to give new opportunities for other chefs. You Do know? you miss being more involved in the cooking or no? You know, I've done this for 23 years. I still feel, you know, I'm 40. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm, old to the game at all i think thomas keller started in his 40s the french laundry and like so all these people are so in a rush to get to a certain point in your career slow the f down and just enjoy it and just be in the moment of learning how to shuck peas and cut fish and cook and like take your time to do it right those are long lasting skill sets that get you further rather than trying to hop skip and move up the ladder fast it just doesn't you know you just have to take your time i hate to say it. i feel like the old chef I, you know because my chef she's <laughs> my chef she used to say that shit to me and i'm like f that man i'm, I'm i want to go <laughs> um and, and now ha- you're like oh i see oh i man. see i see but it is true you just gotta take your time with it and slow down a bit and just get the basis get a great foundation i, no, I feel I like that. that's huge, huge 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 i love that he yeah. got so sentimental, guys. I love it. I thought he. I love, <laughs> I love this business. I love restaurants. I love cooking. I love being a chef. I love mentorship. I love all of those things that come with it. And uh, it's not for everyone. And if it's not for you, don't don't apply for my restaurants, man. It's too much. Drop the mic. It's too much. You're gonna hate your life. It's too much. If you're not all in, 
then you might then find you know there's other there's i always say there's other great jobs they can make may, way more money and not have a screaming five foot five filipino chef in your face <laughs> like yeah for sure so are you five foot five and a half <laughs> And a half, yeah. So there I'm it is. I'm five seven, FYI. I know. <laughs> I look like a tiny man next to you. I love it, and I pointed it out one time, guys. I was so mean, but we've we've come a long way, <laughs> and I have so much respect, appreciation yeah, for my coyantes, and honestly, thank you so much for sharing that. I've loved our time. Awesome. I thought you were gonna get wilder, but. We gotta get this guy a few more beers. <laughs> Let us know if there's anything else we want to share. I can get him back or get the scoop behind the scenes. Part two. Part two. Like, subscribe, share. And as always, let's just make it.